Hello everyone, my name is Sheng Jun. I'm going to present our recent progress on bead shading. First, let's clarify the concept of bead shading. Bead shading is the process of reducing the bid price when we go from second price auction to first price auction. For second price auction, we know that the optimal strategy for a bidder is to estimate the current ad opportunity and uh, use its uh, value as uh, its uh, bid price. However, this strategy would cause the winner to overpay for first price auction. For first price auction, a bidder needs to look at not only the value to themselves, but uh, also look at the value to the other bidders and uh, reduce the bid price accordingly. There is a trade-off between shading and winning. The more we shade, of course, the more we save if we win. However, the less likely we are going to win. To quantify this, we define the surplus as the difference between the value of the ad opportunity and the bid price if we win. However, if we lose, we define the surplus to be zero. So to do bid shading, uh, we try to find the bid price that maximizes the surplus. If we knew how our, our competitors are going to bid, uh, we could simply bid slightly higher. However, this is in generally not possible. So we have to look into the past, look at how we bid in history and uh, whether we lost or we won and uh, use this relationship to build a distribution of uh, winning prices. Based on this distribution, uh, we can calculate the expected surplus for each bid price, then find the optimal bid price that maximizes the surplus. In the past, uh, there have been two categories of approaches. When an ad opportunity is announced, all the bidders know the information about the, about the publisher and the user dimension. Uh, of course, each uh, bidder knows uh, some extra information about them. We define the segment as the bid data uh, for fixed publisher and uh, user dimensions. The segment approach look at uh, these segments uh, individually and uh, estimate the distribution uh, within each segment, then try to find the bid price that uh, maximizes the expected surplus. The significant drawback of this approach is that uh, the segments are treated separately. Cross-segment information is not used. The machine learning approach treat the problem as a prediction uh, problem it tries to predict the best shading factor and then apply that bidding shading, uh, then apply that bid shading factor on top of the value of the ad opportunity. The good thing about this model is that uh, it utilizes uh, the information from all segments. However, for a very large segment, uh, it outputs a single uh, prediction. So it has a single optimal bid price. Uh, which could be a problem if the segment is large and the uh, best uh, the and the winning prices uh, follow a wide distribution. In this paper, we propose a unified approach that uh, takes advantages from both of these uh, approaches. Similar to the machine learning approach, we build a classification model. However, we are not predicting the optimal shading factor. Instead, we are uh, predicting uh, we are going to win or lose. So on top of the publisher and the user features, we have uh, one special dimension that's the bid price. This is uh, uh, not a problem at the training time because uh, for training uh, historical data, we have the bid prices. However, people are often confused how we are going to use this model at serving time because bid price is exactly the value uh, we are looking for. So at uh, serving time, if we give a different bid price to the model, run the inference once, we can get the winning probability, then we can know the expected surplus. So if we try another bid price, we get another expected surplus. 
So this becomes an optimization problem uh, to find the best bid price that has the largest expected surplus. So at a certain time, uh, we need to run the inference uh, multiple times. There are many different choices for the model. In this paper, uh, we choose the simplest one, namely the logistic regression, with the exception that the bid price is transformed logarithmically. The reason for the transformation is that we want the bid price, sorry, the winning rate to go to zero when the bid price goes to zero. With this uh, um, simplicity of our choice, we can show that uh, the expected surplus can be reduced to a simple form in the red circle. Uh, this, as a function of the bid price, first goes up, then goes down. So there is a unique global maximum. Based on uh, this uh, unique uh, uniqueness of the expected surplus, we can use the bisection search to efficiently find the best uh, um, bid price. Furthermore, we can mathematically prove that the best bid, uh, bid price lies within a very tight interval, which uh, further increases the efficiency of the search. Now let's go back to the motivation of bid shading. Why do we do bid shading? Uh, because we want to save money. Uh, so what do we do with the money we saved? We want to invest, reinvest the money to buy more impressions uh, and uh, therefore more clicks and actions, which eventually would uh, improve uh, the ECP, C ECPA business uh, metrics. And uh, as you can see from this table, when we integrate our bid shading algorithm with our budget controllers, which controls how the saved money will be reinvested, um, our uh, new model, the uh, win rate based model, uh, can achieve uh, uh, much lower ECPM, ECPC, and ECPA with a very similar spend on top of uh, having a uh, higher surplus. So this uh, shows that uh, we formulated the problem uh, in the right way. At last, I would like to summarize the challenges we had uh, along the way. So the first challenge is that we only, at the very beginning, we only knew that we are going to reduce the uh, cost uh, for first price auction. However, uh, what is the uh, right metric to optimize, right? And uh, how do we formulate the problem? And what are the choices for the distributions and uh, models? Uh, all those questions, questions uh, cause uh, uh, different people to have different opinions. And uh, eventually, um, we need to uh, test them out uh, and compare them. Uh, the second difficulty is that uh, uh, offline analysis uh, is uh, difficult and uh, slow. The reason is that uh, uh, by the nature of bit shading, we need to look at uh, the performance when the bit shading algorithm is integrated uh, with the budget controller. Uh, this is uh, uh, not that easily done when we do it uh, offline. Uh, so eventually, um, the rule of thumb is to look at the uh, online A-B testing results. Uh, also, it depends on how your budget controller is implemented. Uh, our bit shading algorithm may work with uh, one budget controller, but not uh, the other. So it also has a, a dependency on the controllers. Uh, and last, uh, as we pointed out before, uh, the choice of the model is uh, limited because uh, at a certain time, the inference time must uh, be fast because we need to run the inference uh, multiple times. Um, and uh, we are currently working on uh, more complex models like uh, neural ne network uh, prediction models. Uh, however, uh, the speed issue is something we must uh, uh, handle. Uh, and last, um, I want to wish everyone well uh, during this crazy time of pandemic. 
uh, take care of yourself and take care of your family. Thank you.